Thank you, thank you, Mr. Howard. It is a great pleasure to talk to you for a few minutes about this this awesome work, which, in my opinion, is is the type of film that that many teenagers, film fans, movie fans would have dreamed of shooting or or, or, or filming. Um, when this project came came into your hands, got into your hands, what was your reaction specifically to your character? Um, at first, I was. I, I have to say, I loved it from the very beginning. The first time I sat there and read it, I was reading out loud and um, and my my manager was like, you know, they don't have any money, right? You know, they don't have money to film. And I was like, well, let's help them. Let's, let's figure this thing out. And she ended up investing like a half a million dollars to make the film so that wow. it could they lost the investor. So my manager ended up like, hey, no, this is, we're, we're not gonna let this one go. And so she went in and put, put her own money to finish this. And it was similar to when we were doing Hustle and Flow and uh -huh. John could only, if, because I was, they didn't know me as an, a rapper then. They were like, okay, well, we'll, MTV told him, we'll give you 500,000 if you use Terrence as the lead. And he he needed three hundred three million, so he went and sold his house. Uh -huh. um, wow! So it was like again here okay. here my own my own people mm -hmm. come in and say, wait a minute, this is something. This is a story that really has to be told, you know. And I figured the studios would fight it and wouldn't support it um, because it's about empowering, you know, the average Joe and turning that average Joe into a you know, giving him the opportunity to stand for his, his entire side. So it, it's been that. Sorry, I know that was... A I, I, I totally agree with you. And I, I now that you mentioned it, I, I love that within all the fun, the action, the, the comedy, the, 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 the nostalgia, uh, the tribute, it also presents to the experience of enjoying a movie in a classic movie theater. It strikes a chord in the, in the story, in the narrative about protecting what is yours at all costs. Tell me a little bit about the storyline. That's part of the storyline and how it connected with you, because it also presents current topics such as loyalty, gentrification, racism, discrimination, etc. Yeah, one of the things that that's like I mentioned, John Wayne. You know, John Wayne's career um, on camera mm -hmm. was always heralded by the heroism and the sense of chivalry and responsibility to community. Um, he was a great star in that regard because it gave us these role models that people stood by and, you know, the kind of man you could respect. Well, we live in a day and age now where being a man isn't respected anymore. It's, yeah. not, a, it's not an honored, hallowed position to hold, you know, the responsibilities that come with masculinity. Um, it's under attack. So when we started <laughs> shooting that movie and, and, and Orson wanted to make a strong man movie, a movie about, you know, where man doesn't make the right decisions. It's not always rationalized out. It's like, I'm going to do what I need to do in order to deal with this situation. I love that. I love the short-sightedness of it um, because it's messy and humanity is messy. But a lot of those <clears throat> action scenes that we were doing. I didn't know what I was doing as a, I could play with a sword. I never really spent that. And that's what I loved about it. And I was like, all right, get me somebody to teach me how to do this sword stuff. He was like, no. He's like, why don't you go upstairs? And we went on the roof and he was like, now you do, you show me how to be a swordsman. And it was organic. It was yeah. so organic, but he made it look so good. And it's, I was just like, I love the process. I love now it. that you mentioned now that you mentioned the character, that was actually my, my next question. You, you you talk about the, the, the concept of, of the of the character, the masculinity, what did the director wanted to, to, to bring back. Um so I'm I'm I have been always intrigued by the actor director dynamics when when obviously he, he already had a vision of the character. I love the swagger of the character, the voice, the, bo the body language, the flow of the character. How, how were those conversations with Orson um, to develop it and project it, help you project it so cool, other than, you know, besides the sword thing and, you know, the action? 
Well, the good thing is Orson, like he didn't want the character to curse at all. You'll never hear the character curse throughout. Right. And he wanted the character to, he really wanted him to be even more masculine. Even he, like when um, there's a scene where I end up stabbing somebody, you know, around the end. And my character told her, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't remember, yeah. Um, he didn't really want me to be like, I'm sorry, Ed. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not telling the whole thing, but he okay, did yeah, right. apologize to her. <clears throat> you know, but then he thought that the apology was so human, you know, and it. So we balanced each other in a lot of ways, but I wasn't as manly as he wanted the character to be. And, <laughs> you know, and that's what I think is the the beautiful thing about humanity, oftentimes mm -hmm. we don't really have the necessary <clears throat> to become the heroes that that is needed, you know. And it we have to go into the war missing a helmet or missing the shield, you know, or missing the ammunition, and all we have is our heart. And I think that's what the movie kind of really talks about is the tremendous heart that everyone has. That's that's the cool balance of the movie. So the, the, I also love that the, the retro sequences have some <laughs> film references from the black exploitation yeah. era. Um, also, your character <laughs> look and the behavior, the swagger. I, I it, rem it reminds me of Superfly, Dolomite, Shaft, Sweet Sweetback. <laughs> when you saw that that final product with all the the special effects, with all the, this uh, you know this scene from different movie sequences, what was your reaction? I was like. I was sitting next to my my one. And I was like, "Is this good? Is this good? Is it, did I just see a bad movie and just liked it? You know?" I was like, "That's kind of corny, but it actually kind of works." That's uh -huh. how we watched it, and we're like looking back at each other, like, "Okay, did we make the right choices here?" And then we watched, saw Orson's face, and we saw Noah and Christian, the other uh, producer of it, and um, everybody felt proud. And still, it's like everything, everywhere, and then and all at once. It kind of felt like, okay, if that movie can go and win all the Oscars, mm -hmm. then, okay, there's a world in which this crazy cinematic, um, unrealistic, un impossible scenario. There's a world where this could take place. Yeah, and you're right. Huh? Appreciate it. Yeah, there's this scene also where, where you sing. Tell me about that scene. That, that scene uh, was it your idea because in Ray, in Empire, in other projects, you, ha you have shown a natural talent for 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 music. Oh yes, the song <laughs> "Baby Girl's Gone Crazy." I, I <laughs> off and that's a song that I wrote um, about the film, and I get there ready to sing it in there, and then I punked out <laughs> with yeah. everything. Do it, and so I just started it, and then I put it back down and just went into the scene because I was okay. like, I'm not confident as a singer, even though I've done, you know. But with George, I, the <laughs> singer wasn't ready to pop out in him. It wasn't you ready. Got it, you got it, man. You got it. You got a nice voice there. So, um, <laughs> what was the dynamic <clears throat> like with uh, working with um, um, Dolph Sorry. Lundgren uh, and John Savage, both both legends? Yeah, well, John. Him being my best friend in the movie, and he's so easy about putting his stuff out there. He, he kind of slowly learns the emotionality of the scene. And then mm -hmm. the work comes, and he takes his pauses, and he was beautiful. But when Dolph showed up, <laughs> here he was, here he was, Drago. Here he was, <laughs> star, showing up with a young wife. And all of this and this air about him just still there. Everything was there. And then he took this small dramatic approach okay. to play characters. Um, mm -hmm. very serious about how he wanted to bring him about. And I just watched it because I thought he was an action hero. I didn't know him as this 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 thespian. Mm -hmm. And uh, how he dealt with it, I was like, that's freaking brilliant. Every yeah. choice that Hey, he literally was like, okay, I'm going to double down with this action star who was an intellectual. And mm -hmm. he, I was like blown away that he did that. I loved what he did. Love the chemistry between the, the three of you. Um, Almost, uh, Mr. Howard, almost 
two decades have passed since you were nominated for an Oscar uh, for uh, Hustle Flow. What 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 special memory do you have about this film that had such an impact due to the topics it, it presented? Um, well, two decades ago, um, when I was nominated, it's interesting because half of the I mean, David Strathairn was nominated with me, um, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Joaquin Phoenix, uh, Heath Ledger, um, all of the individuals, only two of them are left now with me, and that's David Strathairn and um, and Joaquin Phoenix. Heath oh, Ledger and yeah. Hoffman were dead within oh. three of me being nominated. That's how rough this business is. And, um, you know, I it's hard to survive mentally to be able to bump into another script, another opportunity where you get to show yourself. I mean, I'm sorry that Heath and Philip Seymour will never have another opportunity to, to laugh at a script that they might find really entertaining or to be challenged by it, you know. I would have loved to see how Heath Ledger would have played George Fuller if this was available for him, or even how Philip would have played yeah. this character, you know, because I don't know if I did it all right. I tried to do it as sincerely as possible. But I'm hoping that this film will be remembered as as my body of work the same way that Hustle, Hustle and Flow and Crash is part of my body of work because I respect this character as much as not even more based upon the, how hard it was for him to be who he is and <clears> for <throat> the project way. So thank you for that uh, beautiful comment. Um, you, you have had a, an extensive career. What what um, role or what type of character that you understand you have not played yet um, would you like to to interpret or to, or to play? Um. Well, as I get older, I realize I can't play the bad guys so much because the bad energy stays with you. Okay. Uh, whatever you play, it actually becomes <clears throat> part. Of you. And you, it doesn't end when they say cut on the screen. That karma still follows you about. So I'm really careful about picking characters, even if they're troubled, that the characters have ultimately end up in a very good place. And you can't always be sure because the producers and directors, writers change their mind as actions happen, you know, but I'm probably around the end of what I'm going to do cinematically, you know, so these are kind of like my mm -hmm. final stones, you know, that I think um, my passion for technology has opened up and the door is open. Like I've invented a new form of flight called tangential flight with linchpin and a new form of lighting, tr um, transcendental lighting, um, a lot of um, a lot of things. So, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for that. So um, this this film has a lot of samurai <clears throat> Western references, uh, uh, um, uh, the black exploitation era that as I, as I mentioned. Um, what are your favorite movies from that era or from those uh, genres? Um, I would say, uh, um, well, I'm trying to remember. There was one great black exploitation movie with Richard <laughs> Pryor and this one black actor. The, the Mac? The Mac. It may have yeah. been The Mac. Because the honesty of watching him and Richard when they were talking and interacting, it was like, it didn't feel like acting. It did not feel like acting. Maybe a lot of the black exploitation movies um, where people were overacting and over, um, I, I can't even find the word for it. It was a lot of, <laughs> a lot of ugly associated with the work. But that movie, even though it was talking about a terrible subject, you mm. know, that Mac, it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot That's about it. And, and how to deliver information, how to control myself and control situations. You know, there's a lot of lessons in the Mac. Now that you mention it, I see it in another, in another in another light. So I'm gonna watch it again. So thank you, Mr. Howard. Thank you. Thank you so much for this awesome conversation. Congratulations again. 
uh, on these wonderful films and keep kicking ass and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Tell everybody I said hello. <laughs>